Welcome back. In this lesson, we are going to make some nuts and bolts with some little textures on the outside uh, with the spin duplicates. So let's get to spinning some duplicates. First off, we'll just do file, new, and general. And let's go ahead and save. So we'll do file, save as, and we'll call it spin duplicates. So for this one, we don't need Suzanne. So let's go ahead and delete Suzanne. And let's click on our flexible design and bring in any of these shapes. I'm going to do an icosphere. We can do like for the radius, maybe like 10. So we've got a nice little icosphere. So let's just go into edit mode with tab, select all of your geometry with A, do G and Y, and just move the sphere away from that origin point. It's kind of working off of your 3D cursor, like an anchor point. So now we've got the geometry over here, the anchor point in the center, and we've got all these different spin options. So if you hold shift, you can turn them all on if you wanna be able to click any one of them. And I'm just gonna do the blue one here, the Z, and just click and drag. So looky there. And if we hold control, we can do increments. So I'm gonna get it to where these just barely touch each other. Maybe somewhere in like, somewhere like that. So they're all touching each other. And there you go, we've got a simple bracelet made within a few seconds. So um, that right there won't 3D print uh, because of all the colliding geometry uh, right in here where this diamond shape is. But a quick way to fix that, um, I don't wanna go too deep into this, but if you, you know, say if you did wanna print that, you could just do an um, add modifier and do remesh. And it's very heavy on your computer. Um, so it may take quite a long time. Um, that one was pretty quick. Um, but you can see it's kind of just made a new mesh off of this. And it looks pretty pixely. Uh, but, you know, when it 3D prints, it's going to look pretty normal. And um, that would 3D print. So that's a quick way to do it. But I want to show you how to use another tool, an add-on today, with the spin duplicates to make a cool nut and bolt. So let's go ahead and just rename this, maybe call it like Icosphere Bracelet. So that's just some simple jewelry. Just want to show that kind of just a basic idea of how the tool works. So I'm just going to turn that off, go ahead and save. And let's go to our flexible design. And now I want to show you the bolt factory. So go to edit preferences and under add-ons, just type in bolt. And you want to make sure you have add mesh bolt factory. So just make sure that's checked. Go ahead and save it. And if you twiddle that down, it'll tell you where to find it. It's under add mesh. So all we have to do is do shift A, go to mesh. And at the very, 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 very bottom, we have bolt. And we get this nice little pop-up and we can switch it from bolt to nut. Um, and then you have all these different presets. Uh, so I'm just gonna leave it on bolt and just leave everything the way it is. You can mess with this if you're familiar with uh, gauges and all that, then that should be no problem, but let's just keep it simple today. So maybe for the head of this bolt, um, maybe increase it. I'm gonna do maybe like four. And for the head type, I'm gonna do cap. And cause we're gonna use the spin duplicates to put some geometry around this cap here. So I'm happy with that. Just go ahead and click. And then we'll do shift A again and add another bolt. But instead, let's do the model, switch that to nut. And there we go. Now we've got a nut that fits this as well. And I may change the nut height to four as well, just so they're kind of even. And for that one, we can leave it hex. We can, that way we get kind of two different types of spin duplicates. Um, one thing you do need to do though, is just click out to confirm that. Uh, but if we go into front view, and go into see-through mode. Notice that the the little um, the grooves here are perfectly on top of each other, which is great um, for like 3D and CG and everything and animation. Uh, but for 3D printing, we need a little bit of a gap. So I want to show you a trick that we can do, and that is to just increase and just add a little bit of space in there. So what I want you to do is do S to scale. You're going to hit Y and then Shift Z. And that's gonna just increase the size of this. And you can just type in 1.05. And there you go. Now we've got a little bit of a gap in between these two pieces. That way 
it'll actually uh, thread together um, when we print it. So that's all you need to do for that to make it actually um, screw together. So let's go ahead and save. And I'm gonna get out of X-ray X-ray mode. And now let's do some spin duplicates. Are you ready? Yeah. So now what we wanna do is just add some geometry to this curved little bolt here. So go to front view and I'm still in object mode and we're gonna shift right click right here in the middle. And that's pretty close. We'll just zoom in, make sure we've got it as close to that center line as we can. Maybe turn on our snapping and do shift right click. There we go. That's pretty good. So it's snapped to the surface of this bolt. I'm gonna turn my snapping off, go back to front view and let's add some new geometry. So do shift A and you can do anything you want here. Um, you could do like spheres, you could do cones. I'm gonna do a cone, maybe drop the, the vertices here to something smaller, maybe something like, like four. That way we have like a, a pyramid, that's pretty cool. And then let's rotate it on the X, negative 90. Oh, actually 90. So we want it to stick out just like that. And we're gonna shrink the radius of these. Just a little bit. So it's not as huge. I'm just gonna get it maybe 0.25 for that. Maybe 0.1. Yeah, 0.1. And then for the radius, let's do somewhere in there. And I want it to be pretty thin. Maybe like 0.25. And I'm just gonna eyeball it. You can do this any way you want. Do like 0.5. So 0.5. So all in all, four four vertices, 0.5, 0.1, and 0.25. Um, let's see what that looks like. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Maybe even shrink this a little bit more. Yeah. What I'm trying to do here is just get it to kind of stick out just a little bit. There we go. And I'm gonna do G and Y. Just bring that out just so it barely sets into our geometry here. We don't want it floating out here because then it won't be able to, um, you know, we can't add them together. So just make sure they're overlapping ever so slightly. And there we go. Now what we're going to do is use our spin duplicates. So if we do spin duplicates now, it's going to be using the 3D cursor, which is right on top of itself. So what we need to do is put the 3D cursor in the center of this cap here. So to do that, we'll just click on the cap, go to tab, go into point mode, and just grab that little one right there in the center, and we'll do shift S and say cursor to selected. So there it is. And then we can tap back over, grab our little guy here, go into edit mode, make sure you have everything selected on that. So just, if you don't, just hit A to select all. And we're gonna spin some duplicates. And we wanna spin the duplicates around the Z axis. So just click and drag. And looky there, we've got a perfect wraparound of geometry. So I'm gonna do something maybe in that. So like 135 and it's still open right here on the spin tool so we can still adjust it. And I may add some more steps. I wanna put a whole bunch of them here. Maybe increase that where they're almost all touching like this, I'm gonna get them as tight as I can. So maybe like 25 and get them almost all to touch. I don't want them to actually touch. I just want them to be very, very close to touching. Somewhere in like that, that looks pretty good. And there we go. So now we can click out and we can just do Shift D to duplicate, hold, press Z to lock it and just lift it on up. Then we can rotate on the Z. Whoop. So the origin's actually here, right here. You can see a little point here, but we want to rotate around this point. So we can just quickly switch our transform pivot point to 3D cursor, you know, just flip it to that real quick and do rotate Z. And now it's going to rotate around this cursor. So just kind of eyeball on it here, rotate Z, rotate on the Z. And I just want them right on top of each other on, 
kind of like offset from this one. And we'll do G and Z. I'll bring it in. I'll go to front view. Rotate on the Z. Maybe hold shift to make it just fine. Tune it just like that. And I want it right in the middle of these. Somewhere in there. That looks pretty cool to me. And now we can just shift click on both of these. Do shift D to duplicate. Press Z. And there we go. Just lock it in like that. Do the same thing here. Shift D. Z. Drop it there. And for this one, we just need one. So I'm going to do Shift D, Z. And lock it in there. So, hey, hey, look at that. We've got some really funky grips that we just created for our our little uh, bolt here. We'll just go ahead and save. And we can do the same thing for the nut. So since this one was round, we made a bunch of little grips, uh, you know, a bunch of segments. But for this one, we're only going to need six. So let's go to front view. Let's shift right click, put right there. And then we'll do, make sure you're still in object mode under your flexible design. And we're going to shift A. And you can add any of these different, uh, you know, any of these different shapes you want. I'm going to do maybe a UV sphere. There we go. And maybe we'll do some, like, like a big UV sphere. I'm going to go to side view and go into see-through. You just don't want to, you just want to make sure you're not colliding in with any of the teeth here or the ridges. So we have plenty of room there. I'm going to go back to front view, turn x-ray off. And we want to spin around the center point. So we could even do shift S and cursor to world origin. That's going to put it right back in the center. And then we can take our sphere, go into edit mode, make sure you have everything selected. And notice our spin duplicates is based off of our 3D cursor. So now we can just click and drag. And we wanna, let's just do control and do 360. Right there, just lock it, whoop, there we go. And just drop this down to six. What we'll do is just remove duplicates. So just go ahead and confirm that. Boop. And we've got super easy uh, little spheres added to our, our bolt here. It wouldn't be good for an actual tool, but just for looks and just to show off the spin duplicates tool, I think it's pretty awesome. So now just hit A to select all. Go to mesh, cleanup, and we're going to remove the doubles or do merge by distance. And there, nothing has happened. Um, oh, because we had um, auto merge on. So auto merge just merged it for us. So thank you, Blender, for doing that. And now we can go back to object mode, click on our spheres, hold shift and click on the bolt and do control plus. And there we go. Now we've got our bolt and then we can cl shift click on all of our little, little pyramid grips and then the last thing we can do is shift click on the bolt and do control plus. Hey, hey, and there we go. We've got everything connected into here. And one thing I like to do is just parent everything together. So for the sphere, you can just shift drag that over the nut and that will parent those together. And then for your bolt, we can just select all of our cones and just click and drag and then hold shift over the bolt. And now if we move our bolts or the nuts, everything stays together nicely. And let's go ahead and prepare for 3D printing. Let's go to bolt, go to our 3D print toolbox, and let's check all, go into edit mode, and let's go to our selection mode. And it says we have some non-manifold faces. Not seeing that anywhere. And some zero edges. So usually zero edges just means that um, the geometry is really small. And if we zoom back here, this bolt is super duper tiny. So let's just go ahead and scale these up. We can even parent this nut to the bolt and just do control P and set parent to object. That's another way to parent things. And then if we just move the uh, bolt around, it's just gonna do that. And let's scale it up. So let's scale it up by two, maybe even three. So scale by three. 
And we need to reset our scale because it's not one. So we'll do control A and apply scale back to one. And let's check our bolt. So that's at three as well. And we'll do control A and set the scale. And actually all of these have been um, messed up for scale. So we can just reset all those. And then do control A, set the scale. Okay, cool. So now everything is set to one. Let's go to our bolt, 3D print, check all. And there we go. That took care of our zero faces. And it says we have non-manifold, uh, but I'm not seeing anything here. So we should be good. Now let's check our bolt. Go to edit mode, check all. It's got some intersecting faces right there. But that's just from the screw, it looks like. Some non-flat faces, we can fix that. So we'll do clean up, distorted, and now let's check all. So that took away that. So I'm just gonna roll with that and uh, see how well that prints. So really I just wanted to show you how to do spin duplicates around a curved surface and around kind of a hexagon surface and how to use the bolt factory. So let's go ahead and export these out. So we'll click on the bolt, tell Blender where we wanna save it, right here. I've got a little STLs folder and we'll hit export. Do the same thing for this one and we'll just do export. Open up our slicer and now we'll bring in our two design files here. And there we go. So I'm not gonna print them right on top of each other. We probably could, uh, but let's just arrange these. And so it did say that there are some errors uh, but let's go ahead and slice them and see what we can do. I may also flip this one just to print a little easier. So let's slice it up, got some supports. I'm gonna do it without supports. So let's turn off our support material. Keep our raft at three. Infill gyroid is good. And let's slice it up. So it still looks like it slices uh, fine. I may have to do some more research on these bolts. Oh, so while they have some imperfections, but they look like they're printing okay. So I'm just going to roll with it today and let's go ahead and print that thing.